consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your sogasmic business. Enjoy this light language activation as we begin to magnetize and monetize. Hello, my loves. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so excited to have you choose to listen to this show. If you enjoy this episode, please do leave a review. Take a screenshot of this podcast and shout me out on social media so that more people can know about it. On Instagram, it's Bold Sexy Warrior, and on Facebook, it's Rosalind Fung Coaching Bold Sexy Warrior. It would mean the world to me for you to take a few minutes to share and review this, as I would love to spread more loving consciousness to the collective. So, I am also want to share, and I'm very excited about this, a uh, new freebie that I have called It's my fun, bold, sexy signature method, and it's to help you magnetize your soulmate clients and monetize on your calling. You can enroll in this at funboldsexy.com forward slash video dash course. I can't wait to see you there. So I let's move into the episode. Have you been on a spiritual path for many years and you still feel like something might be missing? You know, you can't quite seem to feel the joy and passion you're deeply yearning for. Or maybe you're still trying to find your purpose or you know your purpose and yet you feel like you could go deeper into it. And... How can you use the power of astrology to find your passion and purpose? Well, join me and my special guest today, one of my soul sisters and soulmate clients, Regina Bergen. Regina is an emotional support coach, spiritual cheerleader, and founder of Women Empowered Together. Is that an amazing name? Which is an online membership dedicated to assisting women in finding their passion and living their soul's purpose. Regina was inspired by her experience as a mystery school teacher, healing the autoimmune disease she was diagnosed with, childhood trauma, and astrology to help other women rise above similar challenges so they too can feel alive and thrive. Welcome, Regina, to our show. I'm so excited to be jamming with you on all things passion, purpose, and astrology today. Thanks, Roz. I'm excited to be here. I I love talking. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That makes two of us. I just love what you're about. You know, you have such a beautiful, gentle, and uh, like um, hmm, gentle and vibrant energy about you. And you also are hilarious. Like, I just, I can't wait to hear things uh, come through today. Because um, <laughs> some of the things you say are like, I'm just like giggling. I'd love to have you share with the audience how you became who you are today. Walk us through your journey and do what you do. Okay. Well, I'm a Virgo. I'll start with that. Um, and uh, I was born in Saskatchewan, raised on a farm, went to small town school, went to university, did the whole, I call it the 3D world thing with, I was uh, in banking, got my certified financial planning, and I just thought I was going to be this amazing financial planner 
for the rest of my life. And then my third kid came along and it's like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so uh, I became the full-time stay-at-home parent because my husband was before that. And uh, I just, uh, I thought, oh, this is great. I get to be a mom and this is like, it's the greatest, <clears throat> greatest joy in the world. And that's when I'll just say it shit hit the fan in regards to my spiritual journey. Cause I was on it a little bit before that, but it's mm-hmm. like uh, my identity was caught up in who I was as a banker and, you know, Oh, my husband stays at home with the kids and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so when I became a, a stay at home mom, um, it was a shock because I was in, as a Virgo, I was still in that perfection attitude. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, you know, I'm not, I'm a, I'm not a perfect mom. Oh my God. So um, it was a deep dive into all things spiritual, because to me, that's the only way to rise above um, pain and judgment, self-judgment and self-criticism and all that. So um, as I, and then I ended up homeschooling the kids for eight years and that was an amazing journey. We just played actually. Um, My one son didn't work or didn't read until he was almost 10. The other two self-taught themselves to read and uh, we didn't have a structure. Um, And that's kind of how I am. And so that's one of actually one of my challenges is to find the balance between the free spirit and the structure because uh, I'm I'm definitely okay this is what I feel like doing Um, but it shows up in my chart I need to have lots of structure too so like anyone to get things done so um, Mm. yes I was deep into the spiritual stuff and uh, I thought I was doing great and uh, it turns out it was actually spiritually bypassing so um, I invite you you to define what that means Okay, yes. Yeah. So spiritual bypassing is basically using spiritual tools to bypass or skirt around deep emotional issues um, and uh, childhood issues. And uh, so, yeah, I was all caught up in, the, oh, I can feel this and, oh, I have these crystals and and I was not willing to go into the deep, dark, yucky stuff. Because I didn't even know, actually. And, right, uh, and I feel like that's, like, um, so common for many yeah. people who are very connected spiritually, however, haven't really dealt with their shit, right? And yeah. and it's uncomfortable. And I'm yeah. going to emphasize what you shared, uh, Regina, which is it's deeply important to go there because that's where the medicine is. Oh, yeah, good way of putting it. It is the medicine um, mm-hmm. because that's when you really become joyful and happy is when you, not right away, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot to, to take away all those layers. And so I can't, I think it's seven years ago. I was trying to figure out if it was six or seven or eight, but I'm pretty sure it's seven years ago. Um, I was uh, actually getting a Soma yoga session from a friend and uh, we uncovered and that's amazing by the way that's high on my list of things a person should do is soma yoga um, and I also uh, want to ask know, but not interrupt <laughs> what yeah if no, you could ahead. share what exactly that is um, it like it's yoga it's about poses and stuff like that but it's so gentle and deals with fascia and uh, oh, it is delicious. yeah it really realigns the body um makes the body know where it's actually how it's actually supposed to be moving Mm. and so as you probably know we store our traumas in our bodies if we didn't if we weren't able to process them at the time which most people aren't because they were never taught how to process Mm -hmm. and uh, which is about the emotional support that i'll get into but anyways uh uncovered a childhood trauma that i had uh, buried for like 40 years, probably 39, 40 years. And, uh, so then it was like, Oh my goodness now. And I was in denial for a while, um, a few months, but, uh, a couple other sources confirmed the trauma. And, uh, so then the, the whole process started 
that's when I stopped the spiritual bypassing and dove deep because I was in so much pain because all that pain that I had buried for so many years had come to the surface. So, and uh, so since that journey, since that uncovering, um, yeah, everything from, you know, being diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which uh, I know I've healed um, without any kind of um, medication. I just did it on my own. Um, and that was uh, a low inflammation diet combined with getting rid of the issues because the issues are what cause it, right? And mm-hmm. I'm so grateful because that's becoming more and more obvious in society. Um, people are talking about deeply about um, the emotional or lack of emotional um, releases cause um, physical ailments. And uh, Dr. Gabor Mate was actually one of, I read a couple of his books and he was in, they, they were instrumental in helping me dig into what would be the cause of the, the inflammation disease. And so what else happened? So I worked on myself for about three and a half years deeply, but I, and I was making progress, but not a lot. And then I belonged to a child and youth mental health group. So we, there's a bunch of people in our community that get together from whether it's uh, teachers, principals, uh, the uh, outreach workers, and we get together every few weeks. And we keep talking about um, planting seeds in teenagers' heads or, or when they're 12 or a little younger. And I said, we have to get to kids when they're little. We, that's, that's the foundation. Those first seven years are the most important. That's when mm-hmm. the subconscious is created, and it's the subconscious that uh, controls 90, at least 90% of our lives. <clears throat> and uh, this one lady said, well, you need to take the Circle of Security Parenting Program, she said. And I just had tingles for like five minutes, and I just thought, I need to take that. And so I went and I took the program uh, to be a facilitator, and that was the final piece of the puzzle. So I had the astrology background, I had the mystery school background, and uh, so and then I had some lots of physical background, meaning I had taken some herbology classes and muscle testing and all that kind of stuff. So this was the final piece of the puzzle, and. Wow. Uh, It was, yeah, it was transformational because, and I've said it before, I truly believe that um, the world's problems, if if every child was supported emotionally, um, there would not, there would be peace on earth because as I dig Mm -hmm. deep and deeper and deeper and deeper, I realize those emotions are so vital. Hold on. Those are so vital because um, when we can keep our emotional um, wisdom, I'll just say that, our emotional intelligence from childhood all the way to adulthood, that's our intuition, that's our knowing what's right or wrong, that's our joy because if we shut down the, the messy emotions, we're shutting down the good ones too. And then people start disassociating. They start or, and or go into addictions because they don't know how to deal with their emotions. And, and it's not about blame because our parents didn't know that what emotional support was. And fortunately, um, more and more parents are realizing and because it's evolution and it's time that we they need to emotionally support their children so with in regards to the emotional support um, that means honoring all of our children's emotions whether they're angry or they're whining and this is one of the things in circle of security parenting that every behavior that a child has that is so-called negative um, is a need for connection so some mm. kind of need is not met. And Let's, um, I like that, Regina. I feel like this was so important for the listeners to really just deepen into that space of knowing. And this is speaking to those of you who are parents that 
And this is also for me to really deepen into this truth that every child's behavior of, we'll call it resistance or negative, whatever that negative behavior is, quote unquote, yeah. that, that it's actually a need. Underneath that is a need for connection. And yeah. isn't that so true of adults as well, right? Of intimate exactly. relationships. The anger deep yeah. underneath that is actually a need for connection, but our ego yeah. is protecting through the anger. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in, in the course, we call it cueing or miscuing. And so the Circle of Security Parenting Program is an international program. And you just have to, a person just has to go on to Circle of Security International, I think it's .com, and you can find a facilitator anywhere and right are you now one on yourself line. i am but that's not my main focus because right. okay. i take it uh like right now i'm uh, uh teaching it uh online with uh i'm co-facilitating oh, um, but i don't do it very yeah i don't do it very often just in special circumstances basically um mm-hmm. because my focus is the inner child parenting so Um, when we're not emotionally supported as children, the damage is done in the first seven years, but it's never too late, of course. And, um, and so what I, my biggest passion, well, the circle security parenting is my passion, but the other passion is then healing the inner child. So, Mm -hmm. um, my clients, um, I combine the inner child parenting part of it with the astrology, with energy sessions, um, if they don't know the nutrition piece, there's that. And then I incorporate the the mystery school information in there. Oh, too. my gosh. Um, I have so many questions about this. So what we're going to do is pause and take a commercial break. And when we come back, I actually have so many questions about as you were learning this process, how that impacted you and then how that helps you live in your purpose more. So when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit, dive a little bit more deeper with Gina. Sounds good. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Life is a flow, and enlightenment is simply harmonizing with the way life really is. Then you find that life is effortless, benevolent, and free of all suffering. Hey everyone, this is G.P. Walsh, and I want to invite you to my brand new radio show that's launching right here on Home Times Radio called The Flow of Enlightenment. I've been a spiritual teacher for decades, and my greatest pleasure is being able to share with you these deep and highly practical spiritual ideas. So join me in The Flow every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and let yourself be transformed. loves, you know you're here as a soul-led leader to transform this world through the sharing of your passions and gifts. You are here to be in your warrior of light and align your business with your highest self. I'm Rosalind Fong of the show Activate Your Sogasmic Business. Let's elevate your business to the next expansive level. I invite you to flow into a business soul alignment discovery call with me at rosalindfung.com. That's R-O-S-A-L-Y-N. Fun as in have some fun, F-U-N-G. And let's see how I can best hold space for you to align your highest self, magnetize your dream clients, and monetize on your soul mission. I can't wait to connect. 
Moving 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. Do you feel like your emotions are all over the place? That's normal during this abnormal time. There are a number of ways to cope. Maintain a healthy routine, get enough sleep, eat nutritious food, and exercise at least 30 minutes each day. Schedule some time to talk with a friend or family member. And remember, you can always take a few deep breaths to feel more centered. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Okay, welcome back, love. So I have so many questions to ask you, ask you, Regina. Um, as you were going through all your schooling with mystery school and astrology and the herbs, I'm really curious, how did this impact your health? Because you did suffer from an autoimmune and so I'm really curious, what did you notice about yourself first? Um, well, I actually remember the first time I was walking down the hall and I thought to myself, why do my feet hurt? And that was probably about 13 years ago or something like that. And, uh, I never thought much of it. And then my body just started stiffening up and I thought, okay, well, and I'm not into, um, doing things with pharmaceuticals. I like to do things mm -hmm. naturally, which that shows up in my chart too, of course. <laughs> and uh, so, but I did eventually go to a doctor and got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And I just remember, oh, well, that's not a big deal. I'll rise above that. So that would probably be the first thing that helped me uh, rise above it was the fact that I'm like, I don't, I'm not identifying with this. And I actually told wow. virtually nobody for the long time, longest time because I didn't want to add energy to it. <clears throat> and so I thought, uh, okay, what's the next step? And actually, uh, the doctor that I, I saw, he was big into um, keto before keto became popular. He was actually one of the, yeah, anyways, he ended up being on CBC and everything. But uh, he uh, said, well, why don't you try the auto, the, the non-inflammatory diet? So that's what I did. And I was a vegetarian at the time. And so I had the most boring eating habits ever. And uh, but it was worth it because it didn't get worse. Um, and in, but anytime I would eat carbs, I would stiffen up. But over time, mm -hmm. I just kept telling myself and I would kind of uh, experiment. It's like, okay, can I eat carbs this time? How about now? How about now? And I'd introduce them. In, and if I got stiff, I would uh, stop them again. And uh, so the diet combined with getting rid of all of the emotional um, trauma which we all go through on some level um, and all, and all the childhood issues that I dealt with uh, undid all the layers. And uh, so now I can eat carbs like nobody's business. Um, <laughs> I, wow. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't like to, because I know they're not the greatest for my body. Right. But mm -hmm. that's the same, uh, but everything within reason, of course. So of uh, course. like yesterday was, uh, you know, chocolate filled day that kind of thing and uh so that was the key was um not identifying with the the diagnosis uh knowing that I could rise above it um and the diet and uncover undoing all the pain that caused it in the first place and uh again Dr. Gabor Matei's book uh when the body says no, I think it's called, mm -hmm. um, was one book. of the big, yeah, one of the big things that helped me. And then the, the circle of security parenting, which I know inside and out because it's like, oh, this has to do with uh, emotional support and this is what was missing and this what, you know, all those things. So that was mm -hmm. the biggest part. Beautiful. And so can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about mystery school and, and astrology as well? Like what exactly is mystery school and what exactly is astrology? And then how do you combine it into your work with your clients? Okay. So about 15 years ago, yeah, 15, 
you know how time is, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> I lose track uh, of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spirit beautifully guided me um, to take a, a course. And so I signed up for the course and definitely like, and that was at a low point in my life. You know how that works when uh, you're at a low point, uh, uh, spirit kind of hands you something to get you out of it. And Mm -hmm. uh, so I took the course and it was a four day course and it's actually the Melchizedek method. Um, But not the one that Dranvalo Melchizedek had, uh, put out it was one that Alton Camadon had channeled um, in the late 80s and taught it in the 90s so I took that and uh, it's really really super far out and I had lots of negative mind chatter and I was all caught up in the in the spiritual bypassing and all that at the time and uh, so I actually sat in the in the course for four days and kind of went this is bs I don't believe this, um, but fortunately, I had a friend that uh, re-entered my life, um, and she's like, "Oh, you know, that's true. That's true. I've experienced it." She had had a near-death experience, and uh, she says, "No, I believe that 100%." And uh, so she helped me through my negative chatter about it. And uh, since then, yeah, every day. And so how that relates to how I work with my clients is about setting up the sacred space every day because the mystery school um, is based on the flower of life. It all, holds all sacred geometry. And um, when it, is, uh, it activates our DNA, so reawakens those dormant DNA inside of us. And, mm. um, and so that has help me heal as well I would say Um, but on a daily basis morning and evening usually I set up my sacred space and uh, awaken my DNA get rid of anything that is negative or lower vibrating from my energy field and expand my love and light and yeah I'm very dedicated to it and so that's part of what I teach my clients and it keeps because a lot of my clients, depending on their chart, are very sensitive. Um, and so it keeps their field clean of other people's energies. And that's so, so important because sometimes it's really hard to know what is our stuff or what is someone or else's or the collective. So that, that's a vital piece of the program that I offer, too. And so wow. how that all relates to mm-hmm. astrology, astrology is your blueprint. Um, it's becoming more and more popular, thank goodness, um, because it, it tells you what your challenges are. It tells you uh, your blind spots. So if you're driving in a car, you basically have four blind spots. It's in your uh, front left, your front right, your back right, and your back left, right? And so... Um, that's four of uh, the 12 houses in our charts and knowing those plus everything else really can have, can really help us understand what's going on inside of us. And so the reason I'm so passionate about it is because I don't know where I would be without it because it's like, okay, this is why I'm like this and this is how I can rise above it based on my astrology chart. Um, one example is my, is Saturn is a challenging aspect. It's our karma. And so knowing where our Saturn is in our chart help, uh, helps us uh, know that we have to be patient and to p- persevere and be disciplined in that area of our life. And when we rise above it, Saturn really rewards us. So just little things like that that are so minute. And so when I do a reading for someone, um, it's an hour long. And it's a reading that goes above above and beyond the written report. Plus, it gives them their destiny. Um, And uh, it is just so helpful. And I suggest that people listen to the recording over and over again and read their written report over and over again and their destiny over and over again. So they really, really get to know themselves because that's our blueprint. It's like, here, here you go. This is who you are. And 
it's good to know this about yourself. And so when I am working with people with their inner child, um, I will point out in their chart that, and this is where it shows up in your chart um, because this happened, this is where it shows up or things like that. And uh, so anytime I go through uh, deep cleansing or healing, whatever you want to talk about, I, I relate it to my chart. It's like, okay, there's another layer of the, of my chart gone another well I wouldn't say it like that more like oh there's another aspect of the, my chart I've risen above and uh, can totally integrate it and go been there done that <laughs> right so, um, oh it sounds so powerful can you share with us who what are some of the challenges because we really like you really help people um, discover their purpose and passion. So the mm-hmm. type of people that come in, like what are some of the, the struggles and challenges that they're experiencing? What do you notice would be, um, well, why it they depends come on their you? chart, but it's always people who've been on the path for quite a while, like could the spiritual be path. five, 10. Yep. The spiritual path. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And, um, like like you had introduced me at the be- or like a question at the beginning um have you been on the path for a while but mm-hmm. something's still missing um so from my experience because i don't do a lot of reading of stuff um because i feel i want i need to experience for me to be able to teach on a with integrity i need to experience so all of my, all that I teach is um, from experience. So when I'm teaching the inner child part, I should say mm-hmm. that it's based on experience. Um, but in regards to, okay, I lost my tangent here. <laughs> um, Take two. <laughs> uh, oh, my, my, uh, the people that uh, I serve, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're ones that have been on the path. Some have, they teach Reiki. Some do Reiki sessions, um, and I just say Reiki because it's quite popular. You know, it's pretty right. mainstream, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, they they just know that something is missing, and what it is is that connection to the inner child. And I'll describe because we could say that we're happy, um, but that joy that comes from deep within. It really, it's connected to curiosity, it's connected to gratitude, it's connected to um, just feeling good in our own skin, I guess, and not caring what other people think. And to get to that point, we need to un- like undo the layers and beliefs that created the the lack of connection to the inner child and uh even my spiritual teacher i taught her uh the inner child parenting and she's like oh my goodness i can't believe that my inner child was not even connected to me and Mm. uh it's huge because that's our source of joy it's actually so that's our connection to spirit is through our inner child and and 90 well everybody there's not one person that I've taught that goes, oh, yeah, I know my inner child. No, every one of them have said, I didn't know. Uh, and it feels like a li- another little being inside of us, right? And uh, and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience to get that inner child to come forward because over the years as children, we're told, you shouldn't be like this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Um there's a quote, it's, it's quite harsh, but it, it's really the truth. I would do anything for my child, except, except let them be who they are. Because Ooh. we've all been, yeah. It's not <laughs> we've harsh. all been shut down. I'm sure I have admittedly done that to my children, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I see all that I did for my, for yeah. my children, not to them, right? Because mm-hmm. it's all, all That's right. It's all for. <laughs> Yes, it's all four. Soul Um, contracts. So, Regina, I'm really curious. Oh, are you still there? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. 
Perfect. So yes, I would love to dive a little bit more. Like if, no, if people have not had an astrology session, like why astrology? What can it give people um, that maybe therapy, traditional therapy doesn't or, you know, coaching doesn't? What does what specific special um, I, well, I'm seeing things in images. So kapow does astrology give that people um, walk away with? Um, knowing what their shortcomings are and knowing that they're not failing. It's what they chose before they came to the planet because uh, it shows up in their chart. And so, so mm-hmm. lack of judgment it takes away the judgment i would say Roz, mm, because i was just gonna say it's that. like mm-hmm. the yeah, blame because yeah and the blame and yeah judgment and blame it takes away and that's huge because people are so judgmental towards themselves and yes. uh and all of that shows up in the chart some aren't as judgmental and again that shows up in the chart and there's just so many nuances to um a person and their like yeah, there's there's so many details that are just so helpful, and it shows where the denial is. Yeah, it it just is transformational, but it's not a tool on its own. It's can you not, explain that a little bit more? To be, just meaning you. I don't think you can heal yourself with just astrology. You need it's all just, the other aspects, parts. Yeah, astrology is. It tells you the what, right? But it doesn't tell you the how are you going to heal. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that other maybe like more in depth astrologers can integrate that, but I haven't been able to. I've had to use all the different parts of my program to heal myself, and that's how I work with others. That's so beautiful. Okay, awesome. We will take a short break again. And when we come back, I would love to hear more about the work that you do and your offerings and your amazing upcoming platform. Awesome. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Om Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. All right. So Regina, tell us who exactly comes to see you and why? Um, so it's, like I said before, people that uh, have been on the spiritual path for a long time, um, 
even though some people have been on the path a long time, they still have negative mind chatter. Um, Virgos are really oh, good what? at that. Oh, what? I didn't realize so, that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm raising Virgos, my hand. Yep, yep. Yeah, exactly. Our ego they, can come up, especially when we're uh, ascending, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so I work with a lot of Virgos because I can relate mm. to them, right? I work with a lot of Leos because of my chart. Um, I what do you mean by that? People um, my South node is in Leo and that means we've, ri- I've risen above Leo characteristics in the past, but, uh, in this lifetime, it's like, Oh, really? Have you risen above your Leo characteristics? Um, and so I, uh, that ends up me having lots of Leos in my life just to make sure I've risen above and, and can teach them because it's like, yeah, I've been there, done that. And, uh, um, this is how you can rise above your Leo characteristics. Um, and I'm assuming like that's cause that's not how you call people in. Meaning if you're a Leo or a Virgo, come work with me. But it just, what I'm hearing is that's the power of source working through us and energy yeah. and our souls being called and leading, moving towards each other. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I have a lot of trust in the universe that the mm-hmm. right people are going to come to me Always. at the right time. So mm-hmm. um, I just keep putting out content on my Facebook page and just talking about my story, what I've gone through. Um, so yeah, uh, some of my clients have been people that have been depressed, uh, people that have... Um, aren't in touch with their emotions, like they hardly ever cry. Um, It's been people that have gone through disassociation, meaning they've really kind of left their bodies (laughs) um, and are just not totally present. Uh, People that don't know, so uh, they're transitioning from what they did before to their new path. That's a lot of the astrology readings I've done is like, okay, what do I do next? So it's people that have retired early, for instance, what's my next thing that I should be doing kind of thing. Um, Mm. And yeah, but lots of people with negative mind chatter, um, uh, self hatred, uh, because that, yeah, because I was that big time. I had Mm. a when someone contacted me the other day, cause I put it on my Facebook page that things are tough right now. If you need some kind of support, just message me. So I talked to her on the phone and she says, yeah, but it looked like you had it all together. And I said, yep, I thought I, you know, on the outside, I had it all together. Um, but on the inside, I was hating myself because I had a pimple. Right. So, <laughs> so and now but that's I'm all... really curious. Do mm-hmm. people so can you be spiritual and still hate yourself? And are people aware they hate themselves? Like that's a very strong word. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, some people I didn't know I hated myself. Um mm, but how did you find out? Because I think feel like this is really important to hear. Um because okay, I feel yeah. like this is such this is the thing is maybe we think we love ourselves until we discover a blind spot or we go deeper and it's like, holy shit, I I really, really don't like myself or I actually hate myself. And, and um, I can think of a couple people who on the outside, their life looks completely perfect or, you know, looks yeah. like they got it all together. They were always in flow and all that. And, and then yeah. doing the deeper work, just realizing like, whoa, they don't actually like themselves. Yeah. So and the thing what is, are some um, signs? oh, that's a good question. So things just aren't going good in your life. And you, yeah, that's a big one is they're not going good because what it is, is it's the subconscious. It's actually the inner child that hates herself or himself. Mm-hmm. And that might not be visible on the conscious plane. And uh, right. so I'm just trying to think of some of my signs. Well, I'm first just of all, feel, I I'm wondering, 
if it's like the emptiness, right? Even though you have the, you know, everything looks like it's great on the outside, there's an emptiness. That's what's missing. And it's like, they yes. can never fill it up with things, fill up your life up or that void up with more things from the outside. It's like really looking at the inside. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It's the feeling of not being genuine. Um, mm, that you're yourself. just going, that's right. You're just going through mm. the emotions to have this facade on the outside that, oh yes, everything's good. Um, and that's why it's so important to do, get a chart done because mm. there's some really big things that show up that show you, um, yeah, you are in denial or mm. you are, you know, things like that, that, uh, and the thing is, People sometimes still don't believe it, even though it shows up in the chart and the chart is accurate, right? Mm. But it's parts that people won't, don't want to admit. They're not ready. Mm-hmm. They're not ready to admit or they're not ready to, yeah, because they're not ready to do the deep work because the deep work is hard. But when you have a coach, it's a lot easier, it's a, because you have someone in your back pocket that is cheering you yes. on basically. And that's why I call myself a spiritual cheerleader because that's my role. It's like, you're doing a great job. You know? <laughs> totally. Okay that you, an emotional support coach that that is the key to the healing is the emotional support because it's basically telling yourself that it's okay that I feel this way. This It's okay that, uh, yeah, over and over again, it's okay that I feel this, this way because yes. we've been told, taught as children that we should feel a certain way. And that's not true because that's inauthentic. And Dr. Gabor Matei talks about um, if a child has to to choose between attachment and authenticity, they choose attachment all the time because that's their survival. Whereas Mm -hmm. authenticity, you know, we're basically giving, we've agreed to give up who we truly are to please Mm -hmm. others in a way. So um, rampant people pleasing is a big one. If you uh, if you do that, there's a good chance there there needs some self love work on that on themselves. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Thank you. And then the other thing that's I believe is really important. We'll take a couple minutes to talk about this. Is community right? Being in community yeah. of people who are here to uplift you. They're on the same journey of self discovery of deepening into self love. So tell us about your community, women empowered together. <laughs> Yes, so it's been in the works for a year and, or more, and uh, because I, I, it's not time, but it, it's I'm getting more and more pe- more and more pieces are coming together, and so within the next month, I'll be opening up the Women Empowered Together uh, online platform. Um, it's a membership uh, that brings people together. How uh, and exciting! Yeah, I'm excited because it's taken a lot of patience, trust me, because I did launch, <laughs> I did launch but I didn't have all the pieces uh, together, so it wasn't a success, and Saturn is in my house of career, so it's got to be impeccable, that's the thing about Saturn, right, and uh, so I want it to be, and I don't like to use the perfect, you, the word perfect, but I want it to be what people need not what my ego needs, right? That's a big mm-hmm. thing because, and that's the other part is most of my clients are not on the planet to get stuff. They're on the planet so they can be of service. Like their their love of God, their love of nature, their spirit, whatever you want to call creator, um, they just want to serve and that's their goal. They just want to serve, just want to serve. They're not coming to me because they want this or they want to travel. They, I do, but that's not the main focus. The main focus is how do I get to a point where I'm of full service for the highest good of all um, and I'm living my life with passion because of it. Mm. So th- I guess that would be the other piece. And uh, so in regards to the membership that's launching in April, 
is 2021 20, yeah. <laughs> because this yeah. podcast will be, you know, limitless oh, in terms yes. of time, okay, timeless. Good. Okay. Yeah. Thank April, you, 2021. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, I know it's going to be good because I've gotten the guidance on it. Um, the other thing that really shows up in my chart is when I speak, I transform people. So in my third house of communication, I have Jupiter, which makes everything more bigger and better. And it's about transformation. So my Jupiter's in Scorpio in my third house. So when I speak, it helps people transform. And uh, I, I see it like on my Facebook page, uh, people j uh, often tell me, you just get me. And, uh, and, and the other part of my chart is I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo rising. I'm Venus in Virgo. My Pluto's in Virgo. And that's all about getting to the root of things. Um, it's not putting band-aids on symptoms or anything. I get to the root of the problem with my clients. Because that's oh, well. what I want inside of myself is to get to the root so that, um, so coping, I don't deal with coping mechanisms. I give you tools to get you to the point where you dug up that deep, shitty piece of trauma that mm -hmm. is not bothering you anymore because powerful, that's powerful, how we can, powerful. yeah, it's. It is. Okay. Beautiful, my love. Uh, so we only have five minutes left and I really yep. want to make sure that we get a meditation in with a light language activation. Um, I feel like we may run out of time. So um, if you're okay with it, we'll just have you share your social media handles right now so that you okay. don't get cut out. So how can people okay. get a hold That's of you, please? Uh, they can get a hold of me. I think the best way is actually through Facebook Messenger, because and the reason is I please had spell out your name. Messages, uh, so Regina R E G E N A and Bergen B E R G E N. Yes, and then you have a Facebook page, the yes. Feminine Awakening. Yeah, reawakening the Feminine Reawakening. Reawakening, and, yes. Yeah. And that's my Instagram page as well. Beautiful. Thank then, you. Yeah. Yeah. And, Go ahead. uh, yeah, I'm just going to say, so I do, what I suggest to people is they either get a reading or a healing from me and then see if they resonate. And then if they want, they can sign up for the whole program or do a piecemeal, but the whole program is more, um, encompassing of course so beautiful. that's what i recommend beautiful yeah. and then also regina offers astrology parties so you can gather you and some friends or family members and have a party too so yeah so good so hoop. many offerings yeah. and so yeah. i'm gonna and... take um the last few minutes just to let everybody sort of tune in and I will guide this very short meditation with a light language activation. And so I'm going to invite you to just really feel into what felt really alive or intriguing for you as you were listening to our conversation. What part felt stirred up inside? And as you noticed that, just take a breath in. And then exhale. Breathing in again. And then an exhaling. And in this moment, just tuning in, placing your hand on your heart, the other hand on the belly. Just tuning in to your inner child. What does she or he need in this moment? Noticing what got stirred. What questions came up? What curiosity peaked? And just honoring and trusting your child was guiding you. Your inner child was guiding you to notice those pieces that arised.
suspending any judgment, bring in self-compassion. Just breathing into your heart space. And then exhaling anything that doesn't serve or support. Breathing in once again, breathing in love. Love into your inner child. Nourishing your inner child with this love. And keep breathing this way. Expanding the possibilities of self-awareness. Expanding, opening those doorways, opening those doorways for the highest truth and good. Breathing in. I'm breathing out. Beautiful, my loves. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do connect with Regina. Get to know yourself on a deeper level through the power of astrology.